chapter six, and we just run through this, it's just like, it goes through the prayer, the fasting, and the giving. And for these, for a Jewish way of life, this is their life. This is their life. You all know the, ex- you all know the expression, tight-fisted and open-handed? Well, at the, at the back of number six, number six it, talks about the, it talks about the eyes. And, what the Jew, and for the Jewish, what, they, they'll, what they'll get out of this is exactly the same thing. So if you're tight-fisted, stingy. If you're open-handed, you give more. And the same thing. So if you were to walk around and you were to squint, all you see is darkness. You can't see a lot because you're not going to let anyone else have what you, what you see. However, if you walk around with your eyes open, you see everything around you, you realise where it's come from, you're living, you're living the life and, you, and, you get, and you're acting properly. And if you want to see God's glory properly, you watch someone who's living a full life. And it goes, and it goes, and it goes on, and it goes on. And it's, it's just like, okay, Jesus, we're supposed to live like this. We're supposed to give to others. We're not supposed to be open-handed. Where, how, why? Who, you got the who, what, why, how? And this is where he goes. Do not worry. Straight away, he know. It's almost like he knows what's going to happen. He's like, do not worry. Why? Because. If you're searching for me and you're living righteous, being pure in heart, being a peacemaker, you're seeking for God. And, where it, and then it goes, then uh, 6.33 goes, but seek, first the king, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Do not worry for t- uh, about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough for its own. It's like God's going to provide for you no matter what. Is there, and it gets to that point where sometime, do, do it all the time. You, you're almost like a, 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 grand, a grand, grand Canyon, and you can go around with your, with your life, and you can look down, and all you can see is worry and trouble. You think, how am I going to pay these bills? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? How are you going to pay off student loan? No idea. How are you going to do this? Don't know. You're going to Southampton. How does it go work out? I have no idea, but God's in control. And it's just like, the only, way I can de- the only way I can describe it is like, my brain loves pictures. I can, I, can remember pi- I can remember instances from when I'm a child, and my mum and dad will go, oh, that's so-and-so. And I think, oh, yeah, I recognise that, because we did this, this. And they're like, how do you know that? It's a picture. And it's like, you've got a picture, you've got a, you have dreams, and you have desires, but you don't know the details. But it's not until God comes along and says, okay, this is this, this is this, this is this, this is this. He knows the details. And which is why some, some, people, some, some of you, you've been called and you've been putting it on, putting it and putting it and putting it off for so long. That actually, God's saying, come on, you've wasted too many years. Last year, for, there's someone here, last year was hell. It felt like you're walking through hell. However, he says, he's saying, if you change your perspective, instead of looking down, and you look up, you'll realise that actually you've got a God who's carrying you, and no matter where you go, the problems are still there. But your perspectives change, and he'll carry you through. He'll provide for you, and he'll do things. And then he goes, well, and then, then after, after worrying, he, he talks about judging. Straight, straight away he goes, do not judge. And by knowing that, Almost as if people go, oh, what do you mean do not judge? He knows people go ask that question. He straight away he goes, well, you do not give your pearls to swine. Well, how do you know people, if people are swine, if you do not judge? What he's saying is, when people walk through the door, work from whatever background, and you may cast a judgment, you're saying to Jesus, judge me as, in that, as I'm judging that person. And that's a big challenge because you can walk past people and think, oh, I don't want to be around that person. Oh, I do, don't do those people. And you think, oh, you know, I wouldn't have done, I wouldn't have done that. And you can put so much judgment and what's, I wouldn't do that. And you can put so much 
hate, so to speak, onto them. And God's, going, and God's basically saying, how you're now acting, I'm now going to judge you like it. Which comes down to, almost in a way, we've been called together and we've been called to work as a team as well. Which comes down to watch where you put your sword. Because you can tell from when you're growing and it comes down to the next bit where you've got the narrow, we've got the narrow road and the wide road. You've got the tree and you've got, you've got the building so you can tell and you can test your life and how it's developing and how it's growing and how in, you can test the people who you're mentoring. Are you mentoring anyone? There's a lot of people here. Who are you mentoring? There's a lot of kids up there. Need a mentor. I'm not here. I can only do so much. So, some of people, and although they're like, you know, sometimes actually I don't need, I don't need a mentor. It's what fruit is your life producing? When you hit that hard time, do you get washed away? Do you, do you stand for righteousness and learn to, okay, to perhaps take the hits in the crossfire and say, actually, no, this is right and this is wrong? Do you stand there? And this is all the, kind of, the, fundal, the fundamental parts of life is actually, it all fits into a calling, calling of actually how you're living. You're called to do something, that's great, but how are you living during the calling? Because it's not about you. And that's one of the fundamental things. You do stuff, and it's great, and you be blessed, and you come to church, and you get fed, that's great. And we should community together, we're a family, but it's not about us. People won't come into the church. It's us going, us going out. If this building, what happened if this building got knocked down? We're still a church. This building isn't the church. If, the, if this building is the church for you, then you need to ask, answer yourself some questions. Because actually, this fellowship is a body. When you walk into work, you're part of the church. When you go to a church across the way, you're still part of the family. How are you working together? And and which comes back down to the Habakkuk. You'll be st- time. I'm standing here now, and I'm like, like, I have no idea how I got here. Well, I do. I, I do. You can because you can see the journey, but you think it just blows you away. And if I could bottle it and sell it, I would. But I don't know because I know it's not me. I know I'm just a guy from the dirt. And anything, which you, anything good which you see me is because of him. He makes me look good. And I just want to leave you with actually who you're mentoring. How's your work life? How are you living? Are you supposed to be here? And stop running away from your call.